Hello, Spark fans, and that's the final time I get to say that this year. And it is, it has been a crazy, crazy year. And just like we did last year, I thought I'd do a little roundup recap. This is what happened in 2021. A little bit of the industry, a little bit about what's been going on inside Advancing Analytics HQ. So again, no tech today, just a little bit of a Christmas message, a little bit of a happy holidays. And yeah, that's about it. So nothing exciting, it'll all be good. So let's have a bit of a think about what happened in 2021. It was obviously a crazy year still. Lots of people went into the year thinking, well, pandemic's gonna be over soon, right? And obviously it's not, we're still in it. There's more lockdowns, there's resurgence, there's Omicron and all sorts of things going on. I think what's really clear is just how the world hasn't really stopped. How everyone's still pushing ahead and innovating new things and coming up with challenging preconceptions and certainly in the data industry things are kind of booming at the moment there's a lot of stuff going on now one of the big messages in 2021 has been the lake house if you are part of the spark big data data bricksy kind of ecosystem which obviously we are that's what we do we love a bit of data engineering with spark and we've lent fully into it so all of our branding this year has been dive into the data lake house we've got posters, we've got coasters, we've got all sorts of things going on because we believe that strongly that that is actually a really good way to work. And, you know, I just don't, don't ever want to build an SSIS package ever again in my life. And it's been interesting because actually you could kind of do this stuff a couple of years ago, kind of, but it was hard work. I had to leap through so many different hoops and bend over backwards and build a bodge and a workaround and you might be able to get something that looked a bit like a warehouse realistically only over the past 18 months or so has the technology come on sufficiently to enable this stuff delta massive massive thing has matured so much this year and lots of the tools and technologies that actually enable this have matured so much in this year alone so whilst we say it was the year of the data lake house it was the year the data lake house became feasible and easy and you're no longer on that cutting bleeding edge if you're doing it but actually you're adopting a fairly modern fairly tried and tested approach now and there's a few bits and pieces inside that that we'll have a bit of a look at but certainly for us the major talking point the major feature the major thing that's going on this year has been lake house and everything around it and there's a huge amount of stuff inside there now the other bits to to pull in and look at that so obviously the lake house itself and having Delta in there, being able to write ANSI-style SQL in there is a huge, huge message to bring a lot of people from traditional SQL warehouses and feel at home for building warehouses but in a lake. Now, secure cloud architectures, it's, it's been an interesting one because it always used to be if we're using some of these cutting-edge bits of tech, if you're using things like Databricks, which has been around in Azure for years now, but certain things, using private endpoints and VNets and private link and you had a proper big secure architecture and then you went i need to plumb these other bits in You're like oh well that doesn't quite work and they're compromises a workaround and you have to leave gaps in things and essentially it was really hard to convince anyone that needed a real secure architecture that this actually worked and over the past 18 months that has now become possible so we've had a whole slew of customers this year in banking in wealth management and in insurance healthcare Places that actually previously looked at this architecture and went, you know what, it sounds good, but it's probably not secure enough. It can't pass InfoSec. Our regulations, our regulatory requirements are not satisfied by it, but that has changed this year. A lot of things that have come out over the past 12 months, maybe starting to come out towards the end of 2020, are now out, tried and tested. You can plumb it into all your ARM templates and you can actually build these architectures in a absolute gold standard secure manner which is fantastic so that's a big change suddenly this thing that was niche that was getting to the point when it was good and there's a lot of people that couldn't use it they can now use it as well it's an explosion in the industry as it becomes available because it wasn't an option for people before no matter how good it was and that has really really changed how people think now serving layers oh it's always been the interesting question of we're building a lake house and everyone's now going you know what okay sold sold Using Spark to do data engineering and data prep and data curation. Great. I believe it. Hallelujah. We can actually do all that stuff by building out these really generic reusable scripts, calling out to libraries, 
managing all that properly as a piece of software to present and prepare our data. But how do I serve it to clients? How do I query it via things like Power BI and Tableau and Looker? How do I actually get at the data and allow my business analysts to go and query it? And again, this year has seen the options mature. It used to be, you know, you could talk to a data cluster and it's all right doing it. It's not, not amazing. It's still Spark, has concurrency issues and depending on how big your driver is, or you picked it up and you put it into a relational database. And then that's, you're managing the two systems that against the whole point of a lake house. Which this year we've got two big things. We got one is Synapse. And Synapse serverless using the Polaris engine, being able to query Delta tables directly. That went GA earlier this year, only a couple of months ago, but you can now actually do that without having a cluster spun up, without having anything else going on, to query that data directly. That's that's great. On the other side of the fence, you've had Databricks SQL, this whole new separate flavor of SQL with the Photon engine, with the ability to do scale out clusters, all that kind of stuff. It just made querying the lake through Databricks so much easier, so much nicer, so much more user friendly. And that's only just gone GA. That is now GA as of oh, last week, as of the week before. So snuck in right at the end of the year. And that's always been that kind of throughout the year, they were both in preview. And we're like, well, you can use either, but they're both in preview. Or you land your data somewhere else, or you put it in a different format, and then it's all production grade. But it's like, ah. But the fact that that is now something that we can do. And great. I am, you know, we, the consumers, are the people that benefit from this. If we have an arms race of people making better and better and better serving layers, better ways of getting the data and making it more accessible to the business, we can only benefit from that. So really, really great to actually sort of see these getting mature, see these getting reaching GA. And I want more choice. Want Databricks serverless is, is on the cards at some point. And when we see that as well, then we'll have these two serverless options or a cluster option if you reach a certain point of usage. Great, great options for us to be able to play with. The final, the other big hot topic that I would be entirely remiss if I didn't mention, is data mesh has been fairly, fairly buzzwordy this year. We hear a lot about data mesh. We hear lots of different people pushing it, going, right, we're going to do a data mesh. And you talk to me like, well, what are you going to do? And from an architectural point of view, it makes so much sense. It's a reaction against the centralization caused by a lot of big warehouses, big data lakes. We're like, who manages that? Well, only that team. Can we get data into it? Sure, but only that team's allowed to put data in, so add it to their queue. Can we have a new tr curated object? Sure, tell that same central team. Doesn't make sense. So this idea of actually sort of building things around the data domains, putting the ownership in the hands of the people who own those data products and being able to build it out in that way, all makes so much sense. Part of it where it's like, well, how does the tech underpinning it actually give you that? And there's little pieces where it's kind of, it's getting there. The architectures and patterns behind it are becoming more established. But there's still some tech where you have to kind of just make a few workarounds. There's still, we see a lot of people who have a compromise, a pragmatic approach to data mesh, where you have a centralized landing zone for your data. So you don't have to do all the networking and all that kind of horrible, horrible stitching together stuff. You bring your data in once and you clean it once. So you have some centralization, some management, some economies of scale, actually. And then people can then build out their own curated objects from that central layer into their own federated little data domains using a common set of tools and a common set of frameworks. So it's a maturing idea. I'm going to see a lot more of it next year. I'm going to see more of it growing, different patterns, different ways people have done it, some with compromises, some purist. And it's going to be exciting to see what actually happens in that space. Also seeing a lot of companies coming out calling themselves the data mesh company. We do data mesh specialization. This new product and tool is the data mesh product. And it'll be interesting to see how that fits in, how that actually works for things, or is it just a data virtualization with another name? But we'll see. So yeah, plenty to look forward to coming into the next year. And obviously, you know, AA itself, Advancing Analytics has had a pretty, pretty crazy year. We'll go into some of that. I mean, you can see how much we are bought into the lake house because that's our Christmas card this year is Christmas at the data lake house. And we are, again, it's just, we are fully bought into that being the way that we work. And it's insane that our Christmas party looked like that. Because actually, if we take a step back, not of last year, not of this year, there was just seven people in, in Advancing Analytics. We were a tiny little company, built some really good accelerators and solutions and things. But obviously, there's only so many of us. And as you can see, this year has been rapid growth. 
So we're ending the year with 21 people in the Advancing Radix family. It's tripled in size from where we started this year. Why we talk about it being a very challenging year with pandemic and travel restrictions and a lot of people suffering, a lot of people dealing with redundancies and kind of it's been a very challenging year. But in the data space, it's been a very, very exciting year. Because tons of people are actually realizing they need to do more with their data. They're actually in an, a unique opportunity to actually take the time and invest in their data platforms and build out new ideas and different things. And it's, yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy year. Uh, and we're, we're so proud that actually throughout all that growth, I mean, that, that is a real dangerous thing, right? Going from a small number of people to a much, much bigger number of people in a very short time, you're at risk of losing the culture, the spark, the, the spark hat that makes the company special. Uh, we're, we're super proud that we've been going through and actually building it with diversity first with thinking about inclusion and belonging all the way through things. We're incredibly proud that actually for such a new company, for such a small company, you know, we've kind of uh, been certified with a great place to work, investors of people, you know, we're making sure we're doing things properly. And again, it shows in terms of the team and how committed people are and how much people are actually just enjoying it, which is fantastic. Again, we've now grown to four Microsoft uh, Most Valuable Professions, which is insane. So there's four people in our 21 are actually some of, you know, kind of the real community engagement, like sort of um, evangelists around how to do tech, how to do things in the genre, how to actually make the best products that we can possibly do. And we also, you know, I am also a Databricks beacon. Again, the similar idea to the Microsoft MVP, but around the Databricks and the Spark ecosystem, one of only 13 in the world. It's something we're incredibly proud of. So yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy year. I mean, across that, done some 40 client engagements. Again, for such a small team that was ramping up all the way through. 40 individual bits ranging from training to proof of concepts to full platform builds, getting people their data lakehouse architectures fully built and plumbed in in a secure manner. Ranging across utility companies, manufacturing, banks, insurance, whole range of different industries and verticals. Because honestly, these architectures apply in pretty much any scenario. You're talking about real-time data or batch data. You can use the same architecture with a few tweaks of the code, but it's tiny. You're talking if you're making sandwiches or if you're building out, I don't know, buildings, or if you're making money in a bank, all of them actually, the same architectural principles still apply. It's just the different data you put through it, but actually you can use the same patterns and processes. So it's very, very scalable. Actually, all these ideas really, really can apply to all of them. And we can take learnings from each and make it the best we can be. Now, obviously, I'd be remiss here talking about things if I didn't talk about how our internal approaches have changed. So Hydrate is our internal framework. So that's all of the patterns and solutions and things that we actually sort of talk about what we've called Hydrate for the past couple of years. Now, this year, Hydrate went from being essentially a load of different patterns. We go, right, okay, we can use these patterns and we can accelerate how things work to, you know what, this is actually a fully fledged framework that can be deployed, can be configured very easily, has all of its different accelerators baked in, different flavors, different ways of working. But it's that chance to kind of iterate enough times through enough of those engagements, to actually build in the discipline, the unit testing, the rigor that you kind of really, really need to treat it more like a framework. And that's been a really exciting time for us, just challenging our assumptions, going, right, this is how it worked last year with all the stuff that's gone on in technology. Is that still the best way? What can we do better? What can we improve? How can we make it faster, bigger, better next time? Again, it's an incredibly exciting time. And obviously you've got you guys coming, watching, commenting, keeping involved, engaging. 11,000 subscribers this year, which is just absolutely nuts. So thank you for being on this journey with us. Thank you for joining us on this wacky adventure. I mean, we've had 62 videos this year, which Okay, it's less than my original goal of two videos per week, but it's still a lot of videos to be pumping out around different tech, keeping on top of Purview, keeping on top of Databricks, on top of Synapse, all these exciting things that are going on with a couple of guest stars. And plans for next year is certainly to be more and more get Gavi to do more videos, more of the data science side of things. Some of the other guys in Advanced Analytics actually want to get involved and do more. We've got some more data science videos, data science moments that Tori's been putting out. Loads of really exciting stuff happening across all of our YouTube. People have watched 3.9 years 
worth of content in this year alone, which is just mad. And shockingly of all, I've seen so many people with these stickers and I don't know why. But again, it's, it's, it's apparently now a thing. But yeah, it's been an incredibly exciting year from the business, from the team and the growth, from the clients that we're working with, from you guys and YouTube and the sheer exciting fun of doing all this stuff. So what's to come next year? Now, obviously more of the same, right? Challenging the next new emerging architectures, keeping on top of how we apply them, looking at the next load of technology that comes out and seeing what's going to happen and what's going to work in there. Especially Databricks side of things. I mentioned Databricks serverless. Very, very exciting. Unity catalog, how that's going to work and how that's going to help us tie together metadata and work better to build out better governance practices and all that kind of stuff in there. Lots and lots of excitement there. Delta live tables, I've done lots of videos on so far. Looking at that as it matures, gets near to production and all the new features that are coming on that side of the thing is incredibly exciting. So tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff going on from the tech side. Don't worry, I have plenty of videos to do next year. But from a, what do you expect from advancing analytics? I thought the best way to actually tell you is SQL Bits next year. SQL Bits is one of the biggest Microsoft data conferences in Europe. Certainly the biggest one in the UK. Um, and they're back next year. So they're kicking off a full in-person conference, which is exciting after years of lockdown. And to tell you a bit about, you know, just how excited I am for, again, the Advanced Analytics team. We're doing three pre-cons, so three full pre-conference training days. And we've got three of them, which is fairly insane. You know, you'd be like, cross fingers, I hope we get to do one training day. In fact, we've got three across lots of Synapse stuff, across doing data science, across doing full data bricks deployment, DevOps, Terraform, loads of exciting stuff happening. And then 13 individual sessions. And I'm so excited that loads of our guys are doing their first ever talk. They're doing their first ever sessions. They're getting really engaged and actually giving back to the community. And that's one of our main values in advancing analytics is that we all level up together. And we do that by sharing, spreading knowledge, learning from each other internally to AA and externally with the community. So I could not be prouder of the fact that that is just demonstrating how we work, how excited everyone is. Of our 21 people, 13 doing different sessions, which is just absolutely mad. So yeah, been exciting stuff really. The 2021 has been challenging. It's been a tough year again. Tougher in some ways than 2020, less tough in other ways. Still it is a hard, hard thing to get through. But at the core of it, it's been an exciting time. It's been a very, very, very kind of lots of opportunity out there. It's been a very innovative time. There's tons and tons of stuff going on. And yeah, ending this year, I could just not be happier with the industry, where things are going, how people are working, how engaged people are, how much sharing of content, both within advanced analytics and how the general data industry is coping with things and moving forwards. So yeah, all things pretty good, really. So on that note, I will leave you. I'll wish you a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, whether you celebrate or not. Enjoy some time off if you're taking time off. And yeah, just eat too much food because that's what this time of the year is all about, regardless of uh, what you celebrate. Just eat lots of food and drink lots and be merry. Why not? All right, so I will see you in the new year. Lots and lots of new content. So don't forget to like and subscribe if for some reason this is the first video you're watching. Lunatic. Otherwise, I'll grab you next year. Cheers.